when you hear the word transformation, what comes to your mind? You can mention all sorts, convert, modify, change, alter, whatever it is. One thing is certain, there will always be a before state and an after state. That exactly is what Power Query is all about. To transform data from its original state to a desired state using the M language as its power. The Power Query environment is structured in a similar way as the Power BI environment. As you can see, you have your tabs right here, the Home tab, the Transform tab, Add Column, View, Tools, and Help. Later, we are going to deep dive into Power Query and you will see how to make use of each of these tabs. So, in every tab here in Power Query, you have different commands that you can use to carry out different types of data transformation. And Power Query has up to 360 different transformations that you can apply to your data set just by clicking on one of these buttons. So if you take a look around from the Home tab, for example, you are going to see that we have different buttons like removing of columns, like removing of rows, like splitting of columns. If you go over here to the right hand side, you can even see things like merging queries and appending queries. If you go to transform tab, you will definitely see a whole lot more things that you can do. For example, over here on the right hand side, you see things like rounding of numbers. On the standard side, you can see uh, basic arithmetic signs that you can use to multiply, divide, add, or even subtract from the values you have in a column. So there is a whole lot of transformations you can apply in Power Query to your data set just by clicking on buttons. And with time, you are going to understand majority of those things, especially the ones that are usually common to most data transformation tasks. So at the top, you do have your tabs. Then on the right hand side, you have somewhere that we call the Query Settings Panel. Now it's possible that one day you are going to play around and you will mistakenly close this query settings panel and you don't get to see it again so if you want to bring it back you just simply go to the view tab here and then you click on the button for query settings and it's going to come back right here so what the query settings is all about is to list out all of the steps that you have applied in your transformation remember that i said one thing is always certain right there will always be a before state and an after state. So for example, if you check on our apply steps right now, you will see that we have four steps there. That technically translates to four different things that have happened since we connected to this data set. And we can simply go over them one by one. Remember, the first thing you do in Power BI is to click on what? Get data. And when you get data, you have to start by choosing your what? You choose your source and that's the first step that we have i can go to that step and click on the step source then you are going to see that you simply don't see data all you see is something we call metadata which is just a description so if i'm connecting to a workbook i'm going to see like the properties of that workbook and that's what you are seeing on the source step then if you remember the next thing we saw while connecting to the excel data source was we had to tick on a box to choose the exact worksheet that we're bringing in. Remember the, the name of the window where we take on that box was called navigator window. So that's exactly the next step that you see here, which is the navigation step. So when I click on the navigation step, you are going to see the data because by this time, we have already connected to that Excel worksheet and we can see the data that we have right there. Now, if you are familiar with Excel, you will know that Excel typically has rows and excel does not separate rows from headers right so in excel if you want to differentiate between your data row and your header row what we typically used to do is to either make the header row to be bold or give it a different color but this is exactly how the data appeared in the excel file in the sense that the first row on our excel contained the headers for the data set and then the main data actually started from the second row and that's exactly what we are seeing on this window but because power query has to work differently and power bi basically has to work differently 
there has to be a difference between what constitutes headers and what constitutes data so if you check now you will see that power query has actually called every column a name that it is not so the column for row id is currently being referred to as column one the column for other id is currently being referred to as column two so power query tries to be smart and it tries to you know identify that the first row of this data set actually looks like header rows then it automatically applied the next step that you see here which is a promoted header step so when i click on the promoted header step you will see that the previous row one is now the header rows right then one more thing that power query is also going to do is this which is also critical and which is one of the reasons why you must actually click on transform data before you load your data because again in power bi every single column must have a defined data type so for example the first column that contains the row id actually contains numbers which means this column must have a definition of a number data type if you check on the column that has other dates we have date values in this column therefore this column must have a defined data type called date but when you start to check now from the home tab if i go over here towards the right hand side i'm going to see a button here that says data type and you can see that this date column is currently set to any any is as good as nothing right now and if you check through all the columns one by one the way you check through a column is by clicking on the header of that column right now you make sure that you don't click on the drop down because that will be something different so just click somewhere in the center of a column like this you get the column selected so you can see that all the columns right now have the data type set as any again power query tries to be smart and it tries to automatically identify the right data type for each of these columns and that's the next step that you see here in power query called change type now on this step if you check i have ship mode selected currently you will see that the data type is correctly text because you have text values on this column if i click on the ship date column you will see the data type is correctly date as well so one thing you want to do first before you even load your data is ensure that every column have the correct data types so what i'm going to do now is to scroll through across this my data and ensure that all the columns have the right data types applied so when i scroll through it seems that everything basically have the right data types applied however we are going to make a couple of changes and I'm going to explain those changes in the next video.